where warm waters halt. It's the million dollar question. Literally, the million dollar question. Anybody who's ever read the poem has memorized that line and gone over it and over it hundreds, if not a thousand times. It's where we begin it. Begin it where warm waters halt. So if we begin it where warm waters halt, before we can figure out where they halt, we have to figure out what warm waters are. In the Rocky Mountains, in our forest state search area, what are the warm waters that Forrest is referring to? Hot Springs is just too easy. Um, I think part of the reason it took him 15 years to write that poem is he needed ambiguous places in the Rocky Mountains so that people will get out there. His whole goal is to get people off the couch, to get kids off the couch, off the computer, get out in the wild, experience the thrill of the chase. So what did he put in the poem? Ambiguous clues that could fit hundreds of places. Home of Brown. How many things could be considered a home of Brown in the Rocky Mountains? Hundreds. Warm waters. Hundreds, if not thousands, of hot springs. Canyon down. How many canyons are in the Rocky Mountains? More than I could ever count. More than I ever want to count. That's part of the reason it took him this long to write the poem. He needed to come up with clues that people could put together in an easy fashion so that people would go out and look and experience that thrill of the chase. If the poem was too hard, nobody would ever get their butt off the couch and go look. So back to warm waters. What are the warm waters Forrest is referring to? Finding the treasure chest is not something someone is going to do on a spring break or a Sunday afternoon picnic. Richard Eads, it's going to take some long concerted research and effort. Forrest, well, it doesn't take, and then he pauses, you just have to think the right things. The clues are in the poem, and if you can figure the clues out, they will take you right to the treasure chest. You need a little imagination. I don't think figuring out a hot spring is using your imagination. Forrest is talking about something else. Trying to decide what water's warm and what's hot and what's cold, I don't think that has anything to do with it. Forrest answered my question some time back, and that question is, is the map that needs to be used to discover where warm waters halt found online or in paper form or both? MDC 777. Here's Forrest's, Forrest's answer. Come on now, Agent 777, a map is a map. The more detailed maps are most useful if you have the right map, but I'm not sure I needed to tell you that. F. So he answered the question, but he really didn't answer the question. Uh, I think it's obvious we need a map. He's even said that in another question that somebody posed to him. You need the poem, you need the book, and you need a map and or Google Earth. Here's another question from M. Davis. Is there any specialized knowledge required to find the treasure? For instance, something learned during your time in the military or from a lifetime of fly fishing? Or do you really expect any ordinary average person without your background to be able to correctly interpret the clues in the poem? And his response, no specialized knowledge is required and I have no expectations. My thrill of the chase book is enough to lead an average person to the treasure. So those answers right there tell me that a hot spring is not what's used. It's not the warm waters that he's talking about. If we have to begin it where warm waters halt, we have to know what warm waters are. And if there are hints in the thrill of the chase that help with the clues, well, I would think that that's a pretty big one. We can't even begin it if we haven't figured out what warm waters, waters are. So one of the hints in the book has to be to let us know what warm waters are we talking about. Let's do a thought experiment. I'll give you an example of what I mean about hot springs being too obvious an example for where warm waters hold. If I write this down, just like that, what would you say goes in this box? I think 98% or so of you would say the six goes in the box. Based on the numbers that are presented, a six would go right here. But what if I told you that's not correct? To solve this, what goes here is not even a number. Think about it for a minute. How can it not be a number? It's because you don't know the context of what this diagram represents. We have to understand the context 
of what Forrest had in his mind when he wrote this poem. What do warm waters mean to him? Not to us. He's the one that hit the treasure chest. So if you thought about that riddle, one, two, three, four, five, what goes in the last box? It's not a number. The answer to our little problem is, my little treasure chest, the answer is R, the letter R. Well, how does that make any sense? Well, when you see that what we're talking about and what that diagram represented was a gear shift, it makes a little more sense now, doesn't it? And I apply to this to the chase in this way. Everybody's looking for a six, and we should be looking for an R. We gotta figure out what those warm waters are before we can find out where they halt. And it's not a hot spring. It's not a dam. So how do we find out what warm waters are? Well, the only thing we have to go off of is the Thrill of the Chase book. There's got to be a hint in that book that helps us with warm waters. And once we know what the warm waters are, then we can get out a map, and then we can figure out where they halt. So the next log, we're going to crack open the Thrill of the Chase. We're going to start looking for these hints. If you like the video, thumbs it up, subscribe. I'll be making more. I just can't let this thing go. It keeps me up at night. So these videos are giving me a little bit of peace. I'll see you next time.